Acts chapter 5. But a certain man named Ananias and Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession. And this just picks up with chapter uh, 4. They're selling everything they got. And kept back part of the price. In other words, they sold it for so much, but they swindled amongst themselves. Well, don't tell them how much we sold it for. We'll just give part of it. We're not going to give the Lord all. Part. His wife also being privy to it, she had the same idea. She knew the same thoughts that her husband. And brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. And Peter said, here goes Peter again, five chapters long. Ananias, why has Satan filled thy heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? Uh-oh. You see, the thing is, in chapter 4, it was not commanded, I told you. Something they did, something to help each other out. So these two, this husband and wife, they didn't have, there's no commandment. They're doing what everybody else is doing, but they're going to get the same praise everybody else is getting, but they're not going to give it at all. That's what they're doing. And Peter says, Satan has made you to lie. John 8, 44. So what do you do with white lies? This is a little white lie. This is just a tiny little lie. What do you do with Easter bunnies and Santa Clauses? The source, according to John and according to Peter, Acts chapter 3, Acts chapter 4, it's Satan. Every lie is of Satan, even when you lie to God's Holy Ghost. Now, how would you like to have God stand at the judgment seat of Christ and say, Hey, look what, look what Satan had you do. But we did it in the name of God, we did it in the name of Jesus. We did it in the name of the Holy Ghost. I don't care. Satan made you lie. God is not going to take the lie. Thank you, Peter. And to keep back part of the price of the land. Now, it's not the, it's not the fact that the price of the land. Forget that. You lied to the Holy Ghost. You told the Holy Ghost, well, you're going to give it all, but then you held back. It's not the money is holding back. It's the lie. So we're not preaching money. We're preaching a lie. While, while does it remain? Was it not thy own? Let's say $100. This round number. That was your $100. You could have done whatever you wanted to do with that $100. You could have gave $1. You could have gave $99.99. Whatever you did. But you're making God's people think that you've given it all. Before God's people. So when you get up and lie before the church, before all the congregations, Satan has called you to lie to God. Remember what, what, God, what Jesus told Paul. You persecuted me. Paul never persecuted Jesus, not a day in his life. But he persecuted the Christians. There's a lot of youth pastors, ministers out there, man, they're going to stand before Jesus. They're going to say, I lied to you. While it remained, was it not thy own? And after it was sold, was it not in thy own power? Listen, it was yours. You sold it. You could have done whatever. There was no commandment in chapter 4 for them to do it. They say, hey, you know what? The Christian, I'm, I'm calling them Christians. But the people of Jesus Christ who are saved, they're getting a rough life. They can't make a living no more. What we're going to do is we're going to sell everything. We're going to give the money to the apostles. We're going to help the brethren out. These two come up and say, yeah, we're going to do that, but we're, we're going to hold back. So. so when it came their time for a need, and they, oh, you see what Ananias and Sophia did? They gave the same thing, and they would get the same amount that everybody else got, not given the amount that everybody else gave. Remember, what, what was it, the 10%, the 30 and the, and the 100%? Lord, I brought back 10. Well, that's 100%. Well, Lord, I gave 5. I got 5 back. That's still 100% in the eyes of God. The talents. Why hast thou conceived this thing in thy heart? Lies come from the heart. And I'll tell you, I got youth ministry in my mind about this one. It comes from your heart, buddy. Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. Peter, you're wrong. 
you said you lied to the Holy Ghost, chapter three, uh, verse 3. Now you're saying you're lying to God, verse 4. God must be the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit must be God. And then, Jesus said, when I ascend to the Father, he's going to send the, the Comforter on to you. So if that Comforter is God, and that God, the Holy Spirit is God, then Jesus is God. God is Jesus. Jesus is the Comforter, and the Comforter is Jesus, and over and over and over. And you can lie to God. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. He's dead. And great fear came on all them that heard these. Now, wouldn't that be great in your church services today? Mm -hmm. But this is a sign. This is a wonder. Because there is no word of God. Why don't people drop dead in the church today? Because you can read Acts chapter 5 about lying to God and the Holy Spirit. And you can see the penalty. You can see that there is two men, a husband and wife. They died because they lied to God. You know what's going to happen. So you have a greater chance to stand before Jesus Christ and know, you know what? I read that story in the Bible. I've had it preached to me. I've heard it. I know the consequences. But by faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of the things I did not die. That's why these things don't happen in the church today. Because we have the completed word. And I'm held liable more than these two because I've read the story. Ananias and Sophia could not read John chapter 8 verse 44. And yet look at what Peter does. He, he kind of quotes that verse. Kind of. That the source of lies is Satan... Find that in the Old Testament anywhere. You can't. That's a New Testament revelation. God has shown me by the, by the New Testament, lies come from Satan. So you know what I'm supposed to learn by an Old Testament, uh, by a New Testament Christian with a completed Bible with no signs, no wonders, no miracles? I'm not to lie. What's go, what goes on in the churches today? There's plenty of lying. And you'll be held accountable. If I do not get held accountable for lying in church, then God needs to step Ananias and Sophia up before an entire world and apologize to him. And God's not going to do that. So rest assured as you hold the King James 1611 Bible in your lap and you you better not be lying to God. Because you will not be you will be held liable. Because God's not going to apologize to these two. And the young men rose and wound them up. That's kind of a particular Bible expression. People, he, he's all wound up. No, he's dead. And carried him out and buried him. But about the space of three hours after when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. This is interesting. Now Peter is going to set her up. Is it wrong to set somebody up for the fall? Let's see what Peter does. Under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Paul even said to one of the churches, I caught you with God. Peter, uh, Peter answered unto her, Tell me, whether ye sold the land for so much? He knew. And she said, Yea, for so much. And Peter said unto her, How is it then ye have agreed together to tempt the Spirit of the Lord? You can tempt the Holy Spirit with greed. You know, believe me, turn the radio and the television ministers on and see what goes on. Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door and shall carry thee out. Then she fell down straightway at his feet, yielded up the ghost. The young men came in and found her dead. Carrying her forth, buried her by her husband. There's a husband and wife being buried together. And great fear came upon all the church, upon all as many as heard these things. And there's no fear in the church today because all this stuff is going on. Even your Bible Baptist churches, even your King James 1611 Bible churches, these lies are going on. People, listen, I, I've had in Baptist churches, I had people lie about me. About having fair with people and all that. 
and people would stand up. That's impossible because that guy was with me all the time. That guy was talking to me. I've had all kinds of lies. These people stand before God one day, and like Paul on the road to Damascus, hey, you, you lied about me. I never lied about you, Lord. You lied about a saint of mine. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but your words are going to have to give account, Matthew says. That's a stupid expression because, because words and names can hurt you. They can hurt you for life. It killed these two. And I gotta wonder, were they really say? I'm not, I'm not talking about salvation. You imagine after all this and dying, going to hell. Nowhere does it say they were saved. They just attended the church. I don't know, but just imagine. They fell down straightway at his feet, and yielded up the ghost. The young man came in, found her dead, carried her forth, buried her by her husband. Great fear came on all the church, upon as many as heard these saying, "Oh, we better not do that." Well, see, things were different back then. No, you better read the story. Say, you better not do that. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. Um, Mark chapter 16. Because there is no word but the Old Testament. Peter quotes scripture. What's he go to? He goes to the book of Job. It's old scripture. He quotes David from Psalms and, and, and Chronicles. He has no New Testament. <coughs> Excuse me. Lord, yeah. Yep. And they were all with one accord, is that Honda Accord, in Solomon's porch. I think that's the place where they were earlier. Uh, beautiful. Now, this Solomon's porch has come up before. So this is a, a place where people gather, where the gospel can be preached, street preaching. Solomon 4. And the rest, there is no man joined himself to them, but the people magnify them. No unsaved people joined the church in the beginning. And they didn't fight the insane. You didn't want to become part of Jesus in the death, burial, and resurrection? You stay outside. All liars, because of chapter 5, said, no, we better get away from that God. He's going to fry our butts. Now today they go to ministry or they go in the back of a magazine, get, get ordained papers, and they go whatever they do. Lie in the name of Jesus. And they're out there. Turn the radio on. Have them swing their jacket. How do they, they try to heal you and then blame you for, for the non-healing? They're out there. And believers were the more added to the Lord multitudes, both men and women. Well, how's that? The world stayed away and believers came in. Today in the church, you bring, you, you bring the unbelievers in. And then you wonder why your church is all messed up. All our welcome is the most worldly sign for our church today. Insomuch that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. They're carrying the work of signs for the Jews from Jesus to the apostles. Why? Because there's no word written. How would they know what the power of Peter and John would be? That's exactly what that man Jesus did. They've got to be of Jesus. Because no one else done that. Luke, are you getting this? Yep, I'm writing this down. One day this is all going to end. By the time we get to the end of Acts, there's no, there's no more signs and wonders. So things will change. We're kosher right now in Acts. But we'll be able to have seafood, lobster, and, and pork by the end of Acts. You wouldn't want to be a Christian here. Can you imagine if Peter saw you with ribs in your mouth? Man, he'd kill you. He would kill you. <laughs> He got up from the table of eating with a oh, wait a minute, a bunch of juice. See you later. I forget what the guy's name. Oh, yeah. I forget what his name is. And there came also the multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed, every one of them. So the ministry that Jesus passed on to the apostles, because there's no word, signs, 
Jews require a son. They are bringing people to the apostles. And the apostles are using it for what? Money gain? Absolutely not. They're using it to tell about Jesus, witnessing. You couldn't get a salvation message out of any healer today. Then the high priest rose up, and all them that were with him, which is the sect sec of the Sadducee. They don't believe in any resurrection. They don't believe in any angels. Well, what are they doing, the high priests? They don't believe in angels. What about John the Baptist's father? Is he sitting there lighting the incense when here comes Gabriel? And we're filled with indignation. Notice the power of God gets them angry. And laid their hands on the apostles and put them in common prison. But the angel of the Lord, which they don't believe in, isn't God a practical joker? God's sarcasm. You don't believe in angels? The angel, by the way, do you know who the angel of the Lord is? That's Jesus Christ in the Old Testament. Son, get down there, but don't go down there and, and take care of them. So the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said, Grab your guns, grab your swords, brothers, and start fighting. Go. Mark 16. Stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. Go back and street preach. What you're doing, that's Jesus would not do. The Bible, the, the Bible condemns what you're doing. And Jesus and the angel of the Lord told those apostles, get out of this jail. Go stand in the temple and preach to the people. Preach what? Baptism? Absolutely not. The W-O-R-D-S of this life. Got to be the words. No film strips, no movies. And when they heard that, they entered into the temple early in the morning, 6 a.m., and taught. Obedient. But the high priest came, and they that were with him, and called the council together, and all the senate of the children of Israel, and sent to the prison to have them brought. They're going to jail to get the men. Get down there and bring those prisoners. But when the officers came and found them not in the prison, they returned and told, uh, they're not there. Saying the prison truly found we shut with all safety. And the keepers standing without before the, the doors. There, there's locks, there's locks upon locks, and there are people standing there at the door. But when we had opened, we found no man within. So how did the angel Lord get him up? He put these men to sleep or something. He opened the door, the Bible says. Now when the high priest and the captain of the temple and the chief priest heard these things, they doubted of them where into this would go. Uh, what's going to happen here? We arrested those men. They saw it and now they're missing. Aliens came and got them. What's the, the inquirer going to say? God's disciples gone and alien not found in prison. Adolf Hitler and Elvis sound there singing. Yeah, I was wrong. <laughs> They're worried about, we're going to give an account of these people. Thousands upon the thousands of people are believing these, these men, and now they're gone. You know what they're going to think? We killed them. They're scared. Then came one and told him, saying, Behold, the men whom ye put in prison are standing in the temple teaching the people. Street preaching. Well, they're in the temple. So they're, they're in the temple. But, the but there, there was no preaching at the temple ever in the Old Testament. You brought your animal. They brought the animal. They slaughtered it. They put the meat and the blood on the altar. They washed. Then they went. There was no, no preaching or anything done in that temple. They were probably standing at the main entrance. And all the people, as they're bringing their offerings, that'd be a great thing. Hey, don't bring that lamb no more. That lamb died on the cross. Remember a couple months ago? And the priest said, oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. No, we sell those lambs in the, in the, in, we sell them in the temple. And they would bring, they would bring their animals and say, Jesus was the scapegoat. Jesus' blood 
Not the bull, not the blood of bulls and calves anymore, people. You see that brazen altar? Jesus went into hell and washed away our sins. And I'll tell you a little secret they're not going to tell you. That curb in, in there has been ripped. If you were to go in there right now, you would have access to the mercy seat. Amen. But they're not going to tell you that. Because they're wicked. And they're profound. And they could put burdens on you. Come to Jesus. Come to us. That's what's going on here. They're shutting the temple business down. Mm -hmm. By the power of the blood. And then went the captains with the officers and brought them without violence. For they feared the people. Least they should have been stoned. I don't know if they feared being stoned by the people or the people stoning them. But that was a Jewish form of capital punishment. And the Bible said about Jesus, not a stone of him was, was, was not a bone of him was broken. So you couldn't stone Jesus. He had to die on the cross. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council and the high priest asked them. We, we talked about that in chapter 4. They're back in court. Sir, I'm saying, excuse me, saying, did not we straightway command you that ye should not teach in this name? Chapter 4. And behold, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine, teaching. Doctrine is a teaching. They were teaching. And intended to bring this man's blood upon us. Absolutely correct. Acts 20, 28. When we get there, we're 15 chapters away. The blood of God. You guys killed two lambs that day, but you killed the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. Then Peter and the other apostles answered. So here we got more than just Peter and John. And they're having a uniform discussion with them. They're not overranking each other. Answer said, we ought to obey God rather than men. Well, now we're in trouble. Because the law said, don't preach his name. Peter and the apostles say, God told us to do it. And we saw that. Wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Let's go back to verse 19 again. The angel of the Lord by night came to the prison doors and brought them forth and said, Go stand and speak in the temple to the people of all the words of this life. We ought to obey God rather than man. That angel of the Lord is God. We heard him in prison last night. And we're doing exactly what he told us to do. God, the angel of the Lord, Jesus Christ. Sorry, he's God. And we saw the Holy Spirit in the same chapter. He's God. So you got the Trinity in chapter 5. Liars of the church and people trying to stop the gospel from being preached. And God shows up in the midst of them. So what happens when I preach on the street or somebody goes knocking on doors with the gospel? There's the Trinity with you. And guess what else shows up? Enemies. Satan. Remember the sower that went out and put the seed out? What's the very first one that came out? Satan. Here's Satan right now talking to these, these apostles. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, Jewish. Jewish. Whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Okay, Peter, we got it. Some preachers don't get it, but we got it. That cross was made of wood. It was a tree. That's another thing when I first got saved. And the preacher kept saying, the tree, the tree. I'm like, sir, the, the cross. He died on a cross. I don't understand. I have not read my Bible all the way through yet. You know, that guy never explained to me why he kept saying tree. I said, cross. I didn't know. There's no difference between cross and wood and tree. But there it is. He, he died on a tree. Kind of interesting that Peter says tree, and maybe it wasn't as fancy as we thought it would be. I don't know. Him, Jesus, 
Has God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and savior for to for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sin to Israel bagels not leavened bread. We've still got the unleavened bread, even though Pentecost allowed leaven to be in that sacrifice. But we're still kosher. But I guarantee they're not rejecting Gentiles that are coming in, because we saw a few of them. But it's primarily all Jewish. That's why the sign Paul told the Corinthians, Jews require a sign. Here they are. And we are his witnesses of these things. So ladies and gentlemen, according to scripture, I am a Jehovah witness truly because I've witnessed what Jehovah has done. Jehovah has died on the cross and was buried and arose again the third day. God being the Holy Spirit is my savior. Now, if God is not Jesus Christ and God did not die on that cross, Acts 20, 28, you are not a Jehovah Witness. You're an Antichrist Witness. Yeah. You go peddle your, your newspapers and your magazines in hell. Because this whole thing speaks about God, Jesus Christ. And we're not done yet. But the Prince, the Savior of Israel, the God exalted, it's all God. Now we're not done. And we are his witnesses of these things. And so is also the Holy Ghost, the third member of the Trinity, showing up again. They're one. According to Peter. And John will back it up in 1 John. There's one thing you get in the Bible. Jesus is God and God is Jesus. If you say otherwise, you are the liar. And you're lying to God. And I would not want to be in your shoes. Because if you're going to lie and say God is not Jesus, Jesus is not God, I for certain almost 99.99 .99, more than the ivory soap percentage think you're going to hell. And you can't teach other people that God is, is not Jesus and Jesus is not God and expect them to be saved. So they're probably 99.99% .99 going to hell. I would not want that on my soul. Whom God has given to them that obey him. Jesus said in the Gospel of John, I will pray to the Father that he will give you. It, it, it's from Jesus by God. So when we get saved, according to Peter, we get a, a third of God in us. And he's called the Comforter. And he don't make you mumble, jumble, disco or anything else that's stupid. He reminds you about Jesus. He teaches us about Jesus, according to the Gospel of John. When they heard that, they were cut to the heart, heart condition. They won't get saved. Now, I don't know what cut to the heart means. That's a weird expression. And the note I hear says, convicts or enrages. That cut to the heart can mean two ways. I heard the gospel, my God, I'm wicked. I will fall under the wrath of God if I don't do something. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved. Or get to the cut, man, just get that out of here. Get out of here. I don't want to hear it. Don't you preach that man. Don't you preach that name. Get it out of here. You see, either or both of them is a heart condition. With the heart, man believes on the righteous, or with the heart, you could be damned for life. It's never head. This is a fisherman that the guy said he doesn't know any better. And he tells him what no psychiatrist knows. It's a heart issue. Even the early book of Acts for the Jews, it's a heart condition. Then stood there up one of the council, a Pharisee. Imagine a Pharisee sitting with a Sadducee. They argue with each other. Named Galilea, whatever his name is. Uh, trying to read a note here. If you're right, you're right. If you're wrong, you're wrong. 
No searching for the truth. And this is what your is going to say. You're right? Okay, you're right. You're wrong? Okay, you're wrong. He's a politician. A doctor of the law. Ooh. PhD. The law. Well, Jesus bolded both of them out, the lawyers and the Pharisees in the Gospels, had reputation among all people and commanded to put the apostles forth a little space. Ooh. This guy's going to get everyone angry. Just, just give him a little space, will you? Leave him alone. This guy didn't believe, but he's like, hey, let him do it. Now, and said unto them, ye men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what, what ye intend to do as touching these men. For before these days rose up Thedius, boasting himself to be somebody, and to whom a number of men, about 400, that number is really weird in the Bible, joined themselves who were slain who was slain as many as as and all as many as obeyed him were scattered and brought to none okay people follow this Thaddeus and they died the rest of the people said nah don't want to do that see you later and the followers of Thaddeus they they died out they went back to their lives there may be branch Vidians, but you know, they're gonna go back to their lives. They're not gonna start a cult no more. So after this man rose up Judas of Galilee. That's a good name. Judas of Galilee. This is the same area that Peter, John, Andrew, and James came from. In the days of taxi. And they went to Boston Harbor. And threw the tea overboard. This is your tea party in the Bible. Did you know the Boston Tea Party is in the book of Acts chapter 5? All these people are fighting taxes. They're following Judas of Galilee. Would you want to be part of that group? Go to somebody who's a Christian. Oh, we're fighting taxes. Okay, Judas follower. In the days of taxi and drew away much people after him. Probably the radio show. Talking a lot of flap of hot air. He also perished. Oh, he died. And all, even as many as obeyed him, were dispersed. It died. You notice how the Tea Party movement is dying? These are tax revolters. Gamio gives two great examples. It looks like a military booth or a religion. It died. Here's a taxing. It died. And now I say unto you, this is Gamio, whatever his name is, refrain from these men and let them alone. For if this council or this work be of men, oh, it will come to naught. Look what he says. If this organization is set by man, it will nothing will happen. This guy has a lot of faith in man. This guy stands up where I say. I have no allegiance. I have no confidence in any man, including myself. The man Christ Jesus, and that's it. Ready? But if it be of God, you cannot overthrow it. Ooh. This is the Pharisee speaking. He believes in resurrection and angels. Wouldn't you think that maybe this guy would, has a sense enough that maybe he... You cannot overthrow at least happy you be found even if to fight against God. Man, you leave those guys alone, man. This, if, if, if it's God, you're fighting against God. And that's exactly what Jesus told Paul. You got to wonder if Paul is here. I don't know. And to him they agreed. And when they had called the apostles and beaten them, didn't they follow what God told them to do? Correct. But they also broke man's law. Did God stop it? Absolutely not. Now they will get a reward. 
they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. That's twice they told him to do it. That ain't going to work. And they figured now they beat him. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name, in the name of Jesus. So, if you want to stand up for Jesus and be a disciple of Jesus, you got to realize, you got to count that cost. Do I have enough money, enough material to finish that building? Do I have enough forces in me to finish that battle? Remember what Jesus said? Or am I going to get halfway through this and die because I ain't got enough strength? Am I going to get through this and not be able to build what I've started because... And daily in the temple... They moved it to daily. And in every house, they ceased not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. Yeah. Nothing stopped them. They're still going. And we got Christians today, they, oh, we're being taxed, taxed, taxed. And that stopped them from serving Jesus. And that defeats Acts chapter 5. The tax revolters, they ended up, whoever knows where they were. But Jesus went on. That's not happening today. 